Wimmera Football Time on the Flow Friday Sports Show and the extraordinary journalist from the Wimmera Mallee Sport, Chris Greats, joins us on the line to let us know what is going on in that part of the world. Always plenty of interesting narratives and fixtures on the horizon. Chris Greats, great to be back with you. How are you? Yeah, it's great to be back as well. Uh, things are going good, thanks. So I'm pleased I got a few predictions right last weekend, so things are going good. What about you? How well, are you going? That, that is the... That's been the story of 2024, hasn't it? Uh, for all things that have surprised people, one thing that stayed the same is you making a decent number of predictions that do pan out nicely for you. So uh, we're happy for you that that's going on, Chris. Well, let's go back to last week, round 16. And things have not been rosy for Dimbulla all season long. We know that. And they really did fall to Ararat. Quite comprehensively, 155 to 35, a 120 point resounding win for the Ararat side. Yeah, that's right. As I said last week, I expected to be the 120, 130 mark. And yeah, Ararat just were way too strong. Jack Ganley uh, kicked four goals um, for Ararat. No, 10 goals, I mean, for Ararat, which is a fantastic effort. But Dimbulla, um yeah, their their season is just. I can't wait for it to end. Um, Jack Lant won't be returning as coach uh, next year. They announced that last week. Um, he'll stick around and play and be help part of the recruiting and help the other coaches. But yeah, they'll be looking for a new coach for next year and trying to work out how they can improve. But I think it's going to be a few lean years ahead for Dimbulla coming up. They won't like the sound of that. What What's your mail on what they might do as far as their direction goes? Because their stocks are going to be fairly low to attract someone from out of town, you'd think? Yeah, I'm not sure. They probably will get um, Dylan Lamp back and Andrew Moore and Jackson Calder. They'll probably, Jackson and uh, Dylan will probably travel again and Jack will still be involved. So they, so they should have those same recruits next year. Um, but it's a matter of just trying to work out who they've got coming up. They can develop. Their juniors are good. They're a good three, four years away. So yeah, I think they'll be able to attract players, but yeah, it'll be all about development you know, over the next year or two, and then hopefully from their, from their perspective, it gets a bit better. Okay, well, there wasn't a lot in it between the Horsham Saints and Minute Matar. Just 16 points, good enough for the Saints to win. You did say, though, last week that, uh, you know, Minute Matar, they are capable of achieving a result like this or even putting more pressure on Horsham Saints with all their plays available. So uh, did they have a full set of uh, their nucleus available to field against Horsham Saints in what was, in the end, not a massive win by the Saints? No, they didn't. They still missed Oscar Gorth and they missed a couple other players, but they did well considering their season was pretty much on the line. and They needed to win that match to stay in touch of the... Um, Top five to put pressure on Neil. Um, we'll go into that after we do a review but of the other games. But yeah, Horsham, they just, yeah, Horsham was back to full strength. They've got their full team back after battling injury all year. Um, so they, unfortunately for Horsham, it comes a little too late in the season. But um, Jacob O'Byrne kicked four goals. Mitch Marnie kicked three for them. And Gage Wright was their best player. Familiar Matoa, Jay McGrath and Tanner Smith both kicked four goals. And the other good news for the Saints is um, Ben Knott's going around for his third year. They announced that on the weekend. They had a sponsor day in good old Dougie Hawkins and Mark Jacko Jackson were there. And then they announced that he was going around for another year, which is good for the Saints. Oh, my goodness. Mark Jacko Jackson, you wouldn't want to say anything out of school there with him around. <laughs> no, no, he's a good bloke. I met him last year. He's he's a great bloke. Good, good. All right, uh, Southern Mallee Thunder, they are looking good. 101 to 53, the final score between them and Neil. How did you see this game? What were your takeaways? Yeah, again, um, we expected them to win by around this margin. Last week, I mentioned, I think, nine goals. So eight goals it was. They did really well. It was an it was a special day for their. They honoured the yeah, Indigenous heritage. Uh, they had a special Indigenous guernsey they made. They've worn it a few times pre, in the lead up to the week, but it was a special day for them. Um, and 
Thomas Clark kicked four goals in the win. Um, they're still missing Rupert Sangster and Brad Lowe from their full strength team, but they should be back by finals. And for Neil, well, they're going to be playing finals. Xavier Bone kicked three goals again, and Jack McQueen, their coach, has been their best player all year and continues to stand out in this league. All right, huge win for Stall over Warwick Eagles, 156 to 47. They absolutely nailed Warwick. Um, oh, did we see this being as big of a scoreline as it was? We know how good Stall are. We, we know they're competing or have been competing for a minor flag, but. Gee whiz, that's a big score on. Yeah, they wanted to come out and come out hard, and they wanted to put a statement and put a big score on and get everyone in form, and they did just that. Cody Driscoll got eight goals, which moves him equal top of the goal kicking alongside Tom Williamson. So it's going to be a few good two weeks to end the season to see who's going to come out top there. Ash Driscoll kicked five. And for the Eagles, Kyle Cheney kicked four goals. So, yeah, for the Eagles, their last game this week coming up, um, they'll just be playing for putting everything on the line. And so, well, yeah, not a good win for them and one they definitely needed heading into the finals. Horsham Demons with the bye. Let's look at the ladder. Southern Mallee Thunder top, Arad second, Stall third, Horsham fourth. Demons, that is. Nil fifth, Minute Matoa sixth, Horsham Saints seventh, Dimbula eighth, and Warwick Eagles in ninth position. Who's going to finish top? Our rat will finish top. There we have it. That's um, uh, as simple as that, really. <laughs> yeah, it is. And um, also on the ladder, um, our rat, they were 13% behind uh, the Thunder last week. They're now 3% behind. So they're slowly creeping up. And in terms of uh, fifth and sixth, Neil will be playing finals. Neil Mattel won't. Uh, Minter Mattel are on the bye this week. And even if Neil don't win this week, um, there's no way that they're going to be making up 28%. Or, yeah, sorry, there's no way they're going to be making um, 18% in the last game. So Neil should take that fifth spot. All right, let's look at the games on tomorrow. Dimbula, Horsham, Saints. This should be a relatively foregone conclusion, I'd have thought. Yeah, Horsham, Saints, full strength. Uh, they'll want to have another good win uh, to celebrate uh, Noddy going around again. And they should get that done quite easily. I'm not sure it'll be triple figures because I'm not sure they're at that stage. But, yeah, it's going to be a huge win for the Saints regardless. Do you think we might see some hustle out of Nil in their game against Ararat? I know you're going to say Ararat will win, but should we see um, (laughs) a bit of a closer game than what might have otherwise been thought between these two sides perhaps uh, earlier on this season when Neil didn't have as much to try and prove? Maybe in the first half, but at the end of the day, Neil will be competitive at the game. Um, I'm not sure they can match it for four quarters or even three quarters. So they will be competitive in the first half, but I expect they're out to um, run out 10 goal winners at least. Wow. They want to get that top spot, so they need to make up that percentage. Well, <laughs> his name's Chris Grates, but I refer to him as Nostradamus, so... Um, you best uh, put that one down, folks. What about Stall and Southern Mallee Thunder? This is the blockbuster game of the round, surely. No, at 100% it is the blockbuster game. Stall uh, full strength, pretty much looking at their team. The only one they're missing is James Sullivan, who will coach them next year, because Tom Eckle, who's done it for the last five, six years and six of the last eight years is going to stick around as a player but he's handed the reins over to Sullivan and considering they're at home and given the Thunder aren't at full strength I still win a close game here I expect Stall to win by um, six, uh, probably maybe one goal or two goals. And, yeah, that will fill our at top spot. It might be a bit closer between Horsham Demons and Warwick Eagles if the Demons experiment. Will they do that? No, the Demons, they want to go into the finals um, on full full uh, power. So they won't be experimenting with anything. They'll go out there for the final intent game and make sure they're all ready to play their finals um, in two weeks' time. So it should be an easy win for them. Upwards of probably, yeah, it could nearly get to 100 points, but I'm expecting about 12 goals at least. Mini Matol with the bye. That round sings out. Before we let you go, Chris Greats, where should people go to buy a copy of 
the Wimmera Mallee Sport, whether it be online or in person physically? Yeah, so you can get Wimmera Mallee Sport, our Tuesday release sport paper at your local news agents or wherever you get your papers. Um, if you can't get the papers physically, you can go to wmsport.com.au and sign up for an online subscription. Uh, you can sign up for a 3, 6, 9 or 12-month subscription and you get our four other papers with it, the Horsham Times, the Warwick Herald, Rainbow Argus and Bimbula Banner. So it's good value for money. Uh, I can tell you that the sport paper this Tuesday will be 24 pages, not the usual 20, because we'll be doing a bit of a preview for the Horsham District Final, so it's going to have a lot of good sport content, and we're doing a nice special feature on Tim Decker, who coached the Australian team pursuit cycling team to their first gold medal in 20 years, so it's going to be a blockbuster paper on Tuesday. Don't miss it. Go out and support the work of Chris Greats, the Wimmera Mallee News Journalist. Thank you very much for your time, Chris, and enjoy Enjoy the football this week. Ken, we'll speak to you next week. Thanks, Alice. We will. Have a good weekend.